We uh, welcome everyone again. So we looked at the vowels, all 13 of them, the techniques to pronounce them one by one, and also the Devanagari script. Uh, hope all of you have practiced it uh, on the workbook. So on this uh, uh, table. Actually, this table, I mean, this the whole slide set is available for download if you would like to I refer to this any time on the table. And uh, beside that, besides that, I have also, I'm also posting a separate video uh, on YouTube to uh, just on the vowels, this pronouncing techniques you know, based on this table. So, so that also can be referenced anytime if you want. So here uh, we started with the sound a. Uh, throat, tongue relaxed both, everything relaxed, lips in natural position. Ah, uh, with the mouth wide open. Similar to a, uh, double the time, mouth wide open here. Ah. Uh. So usually in this uh, English. Uh, the R sound is rare, which is like father, but the starting sound, uh, usually we hear it like a uh only. But uh, it should be mouth wide open, even if it is in the beginning. The R sound, like asanam. Asanam means seat in Sanskrit. Uh, so it should not be pronounced like asanam. Asanam, then E. Same as tense and raised, stretched. Uh, then the long E, tense, uh, raised, same position, double the sound with the lips stretched uh, side to side. E, then U, short U, throat tense, tongue raised, uh, tongue relaxed, uh, natural position, and the lips rounded. Uh, then U is actually it's confusing, right? Relaxed. The hmm. so, O, the lips form a small circle, and the Long U, the same same as U, short U, but uh, uh, duration is double the time of U. And then R, R is a special case like uh, read, where you start with start sounding like E or in that position, and that's how to practice. You should not pronounce R, E actually, but this is a technique we used to pronounce R, that start in the position of E and you can sound it E and then start raising the tip of the tongue towards the uh, upper ridge in the mouth. So, but without contact, you can sound that R there. And then R is the same sound, or double the duration. R is uh, Similar to you, but no contact, the tip of the tongue is uh, very near to back of the front teeth. Then A is a combination of A and E. So here also A, E. Uh, so you can start sounding like A, relaxed position, and then quickly change into E. So A, A, that position. Then I is a mixture of A and E. E. So I is the sound there. Then O is a combination of a uh and U. So a uh changing quickly to U. O. Then O is combination of A uh and U. O. So those are the vowels, and we looked at. 
the the practice of the devanagari script so now are you all comfortable with the devanagari script so can you identify these letters without looking at the the transliteration that we used uh no hmm not it frankly not not really probably not too much okay okay yeah but keep practicing and uh so maybe uh yeah writing actually you can practice but uh, for reading when we start looking at the words probably you get more and more familiar with these uh, symbols <clears throat> coming to the consonants or in sanskrit they are called vyanjanams vyanjanam the little written like this oh. mm. sorry um, so the transliteration is something like this vyanjanam or the consonants so consonants cannot be pronounced independently without the help of vowels uh that's why they are called uh, consonants and somewhere i read that even the word consonant also means consonant means it with the sound sound means the sound of the vowels so here vyanjanam they need the help of uh, one of the 13 vowels uh, to s- sound them so let's so uh, they also have these five positions like uh, just like this the vowels we saw in the vowel a uh, the place there the, the position in the mouth is the throat hmm. where so what is this uh, what are these positions actually this is where the tongue is trying to block or constrict the flow of the air so these are the five positions guttural palatal cerebral dental labial these are names of the sounds guttural sound palatal sound cerebral sound dental sound and labial so the position is gutter or the or the throat here palate the the top soft part that is palate uh, the cerebra is the top hard part here something towards the, it's also the like a roof of the mouth the hard ridge uh just behind the teeth uh and then the teeth itself the back of the front teeth is the another position and the lips the at these five positions the tongue tries to stop the air or the breath when sound is coming out tries to stop the breath at these five positions so the if you look at the vowels here the a uh, so the tongue we may or may not feel it's very uh, subtle there the tongue is trying to stop the breath in the back of the throat there the deep in the throat a uh. same thing with a uh. and then when you say e as per our table we uh, wrote, wrote before here e the tongue is raised uh, raised towards what towards the palate the soft part there so the there is no contact there remember there is all the vowels there is no contact so the raise it is raised towards the palate so the e and the short and long both e and e both are palatal sounds so the that means the tongue 
the flat portion, the top portion of the tongue is raised towards the palate, but there is no contact. So the air is constricted at that between palate and the tongue there. O, the air is constricted at the lips, through the lips there, because the lips form a small circle, the air is uh, constricted, limited there. You know, there's a small hole to pass through. Ru, again, ru, the air, the tongue is trying to touch, but no contact, but is trying to reach the, the ridge, the cerebra. which is this number three position. So one one is the back, which is the position for E uh and A. Uh. Two is palate, the position for E and E. Three is the position for the, that the ridge is for position for R and R, small, the, the short R and long R. And this four, the back of the front teeth is the position for R, R, that sound we vowel sound we saw before. And now U and U the position is number 5. And these are the A, I uh, and O uh, and O also. U, U the position was uh, lips, labial sounds these four are mixed sounds. So A, I, O, O, mixed sounds and we know what they are mixed of. So A is, is a combination of A uh and E. And for A, uh, the position is uh, back of the throat and uh, and for U, uh, sorry, for E, it's palate. So this is a combination. A, it is, the position is throat plus palate both and I, I also same thing um, because I is also position is the throat. So this is also that is gutter. So this is gut, guttural plus uh, palatal sound I. A and I they, they are guttural plus palatal. And O is a combination of a uh and U and how is the combination of A and U? So here, A is the position is gutter, U is labial. So this is a combination of guttural and labial, both O and O. Now similar to this, uh, the vowels, 13 vowels, having these th five positions, the consonants also have five positions there. So the only difference between these two is in consonants there is more contact than the uh, vowels. Vowels there is no contact, there is free F, free flow of the air. But in consonants either there is a full contact, full blockage of the air at those positions or there is almost full contact. <laughs> However, these consonants cannot be pronounced independently without adding one of the vowels up and so to them. So we'll look at them. We'll start looking at these consonants. The first one the word, I, you know, for example, the word here is skill. Skill. So, uh, somebody like uh, so Shiva. Can I can you pronounce skill? Skill. Yeah. So the the second there after the first uh, we are having that skill or, or the back the last one back so here mm, some of the pronunciation might we we might hear a small hus that hus sound there mm -hmm. but without that hus sound like 
the pure that muted curd, skill, skill. So somewhat similar to that, but muted. So if you compare the second, uh, this one, the second line here, for example, if you try to pronounce bunkhouse, bunkhouse, bunkhouse. Uh, so where this bunkhouse is there, that k, uh, that after bung, after bung, this, focus, focus on the pronunciation of this, k, bunkhouse. So they, I think there is a difference between how you pronounce this k, k in skill and this k in bunkhouse. So this k is muted without the sound of this h, the h sound. So, uh, I'm not sure about the English pronunciation, but in Sanskritam, uh, the very first consonant is that, this one, the k sound without the addition of ha at the end. The k. And the second consonant is this, with the addition of, with the addition of ha. ha. Mm -hmm. So the first one is k, k. I say k. And second one is k, k. And here also there is, there is addition of ha there, and the, because there is, it needs more breath than this, the first pronunciation of k. K, I pronounce it muted, less breath. K, k. And the same sound, more breath, like explosive breath. Mm -hmm. So I push the air out <coughs> explosively. K, k. These are the first two consonants. So we'll we'll also start preparing a chart for this. But right now, just try to understand the position and the breath. These two are important. The position where the tongue is trying to stop the air, uh, and what part of the tongue is stopping the air. Both are important. What part? and where in the uh, oral cavity in the mouth it is trying to stop the air. So where it is trying to stop the air that is the position of that uh, sound and what part of the uh, tongue is trying to stop the air that is called the, uh, the actuator. Mm -hmm. actuator. So the first one K, K. So we can, again, if we start prepare, writing the transliteration sound, not the Deva, Devanagari script, but the, just the transliteration. So you can just represent it as K. Okay. So, but the thing is, uh, remember, now we have to be very accurate in representing and what the sound is, uh, I mean, sounds like. So here as we say k or k, there is always at the end, there is a, right? If you remove that k, k part, at the end we are bringing that sound out with the help of that a sound at the end. K, k. Though it is short, we can still, it is also, it is also, there is always the addition of a sound at the end here. K. So we can't just pronounce that without the addition of that short a, uh, however short it is, there, has, there will be a short vowel there at the end. K. So to that here the tongue is actually touching the back of the throat uh, compared to that a uh, sound. When you say a, uh, it's very much relaxed. The tongue is relaxed. Uh, you don't feel the touch there at the back. But when you're trying to bring, trying to say k in that skill. You can see that, that you can feel the touch of the tongue at the back there. But to ultimately to sound it out, you know, for the sound to come out, the vowel, that a uh sound is required there. K. And similarly that k also, the k. The breath is there, the, the more breath is added 
when we pronounce that ka so the position remains same the back of the uh, throat the tongue is also back of the tongue they're touching there uh, and more breath but again at the end the a uh is heard there ka <laughs> no so that is the those are the two sounds uh we use with the back of the mouth uh, back of the throat there so then the next word here let's say bug or gate so in in that if you focus on g g or in the gate the first uh, syllable the gate g so what is the difference between this k and g what are the what is the difference in that characteristic of this sounds k and g what where is the position where is the tongue trying to stop the air for k and g or at number 2 no number 2 we need to raise the uh, tongue right like uh, okay. e yeah. mm-hmm. but here g no. and no. k yeah. the tongue position is same oh, can try that g k g k in the gate gate and skill that k the tongue okay. position is same mm-hmm. so it is the position is back of the throat so for both but what is the other difference okay. like the k and g so if you if you hold the neck with your uh, uh, has more air yeah more air so if you hold your uh, the first neck, one is explosive correct yeah uh if you surround your neck with your like uh, fingers no hold it close and surround it and then try to say k and g k g you'll you'll feel that vibration for g you know? more vibration the, the resonance you know? g it has k and that the other the, in the bunk house that k also k there is it's a muted kind of less resonance yeah. so when you sound out g the vibration is you can feel the vibration around in the neck you know, in, the, in the throat there oh, g so the so k and k they are muted and g g g this is this needs vibration yeah. or wo- voice there are so we'll start calling it voice that is uh, what the <coughs> the science and as per the uh, science of pronunciation they are voiced and whereas the k and k they are muted non voiced yeah. the g we need that vibration the in the in the throat there uh but the position is no change in the position of the throat hmm? now the next one is log house log ha ga so here we have, uh, our sound interest here is in the ga sound so this is also similar to ga but there is a addition of ha that is ha means which is not pron- pronounced separately but the air the explosive breath is added to that g so it was g there now the g g so this is similar to the difference between k and k so here the here we start sounding g but with with breath explosive breath added, added to it so g no? log house g so these two are the next two the position is same again there is no difference in all these positions but it is same 
so we'll, we'll we can write uh, here the first one we can write uh, in the transliteration scheme we can write k a i'm writing a because uh, a because the a uh sound is heard at the end but the actual the pure consonant is just k part of that which cannot be actually pronounced completely without the uh, without the help of some other sound like the vowel sound and here also this is k so i'll just write as a transliteration scheme symbol is k h a and the the consonant part being k h k, k sound and a uh is added for the ease of pronunciation there and also the k the the position is throat where the air is blocked actually blocked there is complete contact of the back of the tongue the k and it is non voiced it is non voiced so i will i can write non voiced and we and less breath compared to ka this is explosive breath so here i can write the back of the throat that the throat is the position and voiced okay. this is voiced and for more breath we'll call it aspirated okay. aspirated aspiration means the breath the explosive breath okay. heavy breath is needed <laughs> whereas for this uh, there is less breath less effort uh, to put in the breath breath there k so non aspirated so we can start forming the table like this for g position is throat only but uh, this is voiced sorry this is not voiced non muted for k but is aspirated it's more breath so here throat voice the vibration is needed and less breath non aspirated and log house g throat and voiced and aspirated more breath now the next sound is uh part of the word sing so when we say sing or bing so how this this sound is how do how does this sound like the n part when we say sing that ng ng sound there bing ng ng sound the ng the ng if you focus on ng there so that is also similar to k k so you can see that the throat in the throat the back of the throat the air is blocked with the back of the uh, tongue only so like k k if you can you can try to sound that k n n k n the the position remains same for that k n so what is the difference here so here also it is throat the difference here is yeah, it's uh why why is because there is a vibration there now the difference is that because this mm, is 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 you notice mm, is it's a like a nasal sound the nose is involved here so how is it involved the air is coming uh, passed through the nose also the breath the so the breath which is coming out of the throat mm so in case of the back the k and the the kh g gh the air is not passed or at least should not be is not supposed to be passed to the nose 
all the air, the complete air has to come out of the mouth. But in case of the sing, the sing, in that is in the sing sound, partial air, the air, some air passes through the mouth also, like uh, the mouth cavity, and partially it passes through nose also, while the touch remains here, the touch of the tongue, the back of the tongue is touching, the contacting the back of the throat there. So the positions remain same. The difference between the other first four is that the air, while it is being passed partially, some air is also pushed through the uh, nose, that ng sound, nasal. So this one is nasal here. So keeping the position of the throat same and variation of those other characteristics, we can produce at least five signs, sounds. There are other, other sounds which might be possible, but for the purpose of the alphabet or the letter of charts, we'll just limit to these uh, characteristics. Uh, uh, so the first one, so, so, as I have written here, the table here, consonants table, the position is in the first column, and this minus V, V means voiced, and minus indicates the absence. That means it is muted. There is no vibration. Vibrational sound or resonating sound in the throat muscles there that is indicated by minus negative V and aspiration the breath the requirement of breath less breath is minus A more breath explosive breath is plus A and at the end there is nozzle here N N and note that the nozzle sound nasal sounds uh, are also require less breath. The first uh, series here, the guttural sounds, k, k, g, g, ng. The k, non-voiced, muted, less breath. K, same, uh, muted, more breath. G, vibrational, less breath. G, Vibrational, more breath. Ng, vibrational, less breath, nasal. So, nasal means the part of the air comes out through the nasal passage. So, those are the first five consonants when pronounced with the help of the a uh sound. Remember that? Always the a uh sound, we are adding the a uh sound at the end. We can also add some other sound also, like some other vowel, vowel also. So if we add this a uh, uh sound, the second sound a, uh, how is the k going to pronounce, k going to be pronounced? It is going to sound like ka. Okay? Ka. So if you add a, uh, it is going to sound like k. The position remains same, everything else remains same, muted, non-aspirate, less breath, and no air through the nasal passage. So everything else remains same, but we are just adding a different vowel, you know, ka, and so on. So that we'll see this uh, adding different vo vowels later. But now let's we can continue with the consonant formation, other consonants. So, any questions so far? Yes, I have a question. Yeah. This is uh, Madhavendra. I have a question on 
is uh, twenty of these twenty five consonants mm. <coughs> of the uh, voice aspirated. Uh, they, the voice aspirated. They don't exist in my language in Swedish, and uh, and I wonder how I can train my brain to pronounce these sounds. Mm. The easiest one to pronounce is the labial. Labial? <laughs> Voice yeah. aspirated. Labial aspirated, correct, yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, for this guttural, when we we can look at the other uh, consonants, maybe that would help. But what I would say is that the so how do you pronounce that? You don't this k doesn't exist, like the the aspirates do not exist. They are all muted. Yeah. The aspirated exists for unvoiced. Uh, unvoiced. Uh, and that's, like, that's very easy. Correct, correct, correct. <clears throat> so probably that is uh, true true in English also, I think. That's why these examples here, like a bunk house, there is, there is no separate like a, or the, uh, the log house. There is no separate, uh, a, a good example here. Like, so this is like a, where there is just a one word like that. This is log house, so like log house. When we say that quickly, log house. So that is the closest sound that can come to for the g sound here. So, mm -hmm. uh, similarly, bunk house also. So otherwise, see when in English also these uh, uh, when it is at the beginning, k k is at the beginning of the some word. So, for example, say uh, the cool. Cool. So, what I have seen is, uh, what I have read is that this k sound here includes some element of that h. Okay, it's not completely muted. Cool. That cool. Uh, which my pronunciation may not be match yours, but I'm trying to do that, adding this h sound there a little bit. K sound. Cool. But in Sanskritam, it has to be completely muted. There is no a uh sound. So that is why, because we have been used to that kind of uh, positions you know, since you know, many, many years, the childhood. So we do not add this H, you know, the Indians usually. We don't add. We just say cool, cool. So there is no H element there, cool. So. So that is the difference. Now, when we add more H to it, more H, rather than the uh, subtle H, cool, then it becomes explosive, cool. So you have to push the that breath really hard out there, cool, ka, like one cow, cows there. So um, does that help to some extent? Like it's really explosive, real explosive has to come out. That so even for the ga. So when I say uh, gate, gate, ga, gate, ga, that there is no h that ha part added there. Ha, the aspiration, the breath part is very very uh, neutral. Ga, gate, it's completely muted. Now, when I add that, when I push the air really hard, I have to the touch, trying to that uh, throat is really pushed with the tongue, there is a hard contact, and the air comes out like an explosion. Is it really like how the explosion is happening? It's a very narrow gap, right? So, is a real push there. So. Because here, this, the, the first series, guttural sounds, the back of the throat is involved there. So the touch is really may not be that, uh, we may not feel it. But when we, let's look at the uh, next series where you can actually feel the touch. Huh? And then you might 
would uh, be able to understand it better. The difference between aspirated and non-aspirated, um, where we can feel the contact actually. Here also there is a contact for K and K because it is deep inside <coughs> the throat. We may not realize it actually. So. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah. That man, the Swedish man, maybe he can do it. We just didn't, you know, we can hear him. Sometimes people think they're not doing it, but they could do it. If he could try to say it, and then we could hear if he's doing it right. He's doing it okay. So I, I didn't hear it completely. So are you are saying that uh, ask him to pronounce it? Yes, please. Then yeah, yeah, that is yeah. So you can try, Madhavendra. You want to try? Okay. Uh, what I have noticed, what happens when I try, is that it, uh, the breath is going. Uh, not only for the consonant, but it's coming out through the vowel also. So like it will sound g, g, like this. Yeah, but that is very close enough, good enough. Like, uh, so what do you say? Like from where else it is coming? Labial. It is uh, right uh, when I try to say aspirated uh, voiced. Stops. Ah. Then the aspiration also come not only during the consonant but during the following vowel. It, it goes too long yeah. time yeah. the aspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what uh, what I heard is quite good. I mean, it's good. I mean, it, it, but see the thing is that when we say just g. Uh, maybe when we say it independently, the that aspiration tends to come afterwards. But let's you know uh, if we let's say if we try to use it in a word, it may be better because uh, the the mouth will has to it has to change the position accordingly. Uh, for example, let's say, no, what I would, I am noticing is that when you say gh, if we, uh, if the, if we narrow the mouth, the cavity, the, the, the space within the cavity, if you, if you narrow it, then it's, it tends to follow that uh, vowel, like a g. But if you if you put more room in your, if you have, if you can try to put more room, make more room, room inside the mouth, like when pronouncing g, g. So then it might be it it may be part of that. Vowel like g, like at the back of the mouth, back especially back of the mouth. Try to uh, expand it, g, g, rather than trying to sound it like g. When you say g, where at the back of the mouth there is little, uh, not much expanded room or widened room, so then it 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 sounds like it is following that vowel. Like, uh, but when we really try that at the back of the, that the throat there, uh, widen the throat at the back there, uh, then it is better. Yeah, I think it works better with this this way. Yeah, uh, yeah. G uh, uh. The same thing like the while pronouncing K also you can try that that uh, at the back wide open that at the back not at the front okay? front of the mouth back of the throat there 
uh, uh, see expand that k kh g gh anyone else wanting to try i'll try can you hear me yeah um k k g g n yeah yeah so the yeah the, yeah that's a good one but the last one is more like ng ng not mm-hmm. so ng So again at the back of the throat expand it while well, this the expand it mm-hmm. the back yeah yeah yes yeah. yes yeah yeah okay yeah. thank you because if you don't expand that then what happens is the air uh, air seems to constrict at number 2 which should not uh-huh. happen yeah if you don't expand yeah so, yeah if you don't expand it, it sounds like yeah right yeah So yeah. this one is ng. So yeah. open the mouth. Try to down. open this. Open the mouth here. Wide on this top, like ah, and ng at the back. Ng. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is that right? Can I try? Sorry. Can I try something? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ka uh, ka. I think I did it in the front of the mouth. So, ka, ka, ga, ga, ng. Ah, right. So the last one needs some practice. And actually, the last one nasal sound is uh, better pronounced within a word rather than independently. Ng. Because, yeah, try that again. Ng. Huh. So. what i hear is the starting sound is a uh, like when i hear you ung um, ung um, so that a uh sound should not be there because yeah it is okay to say that but that a uh is not part of the ng uh sound it's just ung 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 yeah ung okay. ung uh. uh. okay uh Huh. so we these are the four characteristics actually five the nasal one also non voiced voiced non aspirated aspirated and nasal so nasal also is voiced uh, non aspirated and nasal so with these five characteristics so we can uh, now build up our chart of consonants the first five is the uh, the throat position the and the next position is the palate or the soft part at the top there just after the after the uh, throat and before the hard part of the uh, the ridge here so this is this is this soft this is soft part i mean this is important to know that this is not something that the hard part so so when we say e the vowel e you will notice that the this part of the tongue the flat top part is moving is raised towards this two part like right? it is not here this is the back of the throat but the next part e e you can hear that you can you can experience that e now using this position what are the consonants the vowel is e but how about the consonants so just to remind us just to recap that this one at the throat position we have k kh g gh ng five consonants and what are the vowels a uh, and a uh. does have the throat position now for uh using this palate for the palate the uh 
the vowels are e and e these are the palatal vowels now using that position what are the uh, consonants so with the raised flat uh, portion of the tongue towards the palate what consonants we can pronounce uh, we'll see that the words here for example the english words the first one is chalk chalk in the so in that the the first uh, sound syllable or cha cha so if you notice that where is it so the tongue is con coming into contact cha cha it is coming into contact at this uh, position here location cha chalk so this is the first uh, consonant of the palatal series the palatals and and the flat of the tongue indicates the part of the tongue which is the actuator which is the instrument to use to uh, come in contact here with this part of the mouth so in this ch, ch part this is also non voiced right? muted there is no vibration and there is no uh, there is less breath less effort you know of breath here ch but the position changes the second one catch him so here this again uh, aspirated non voiced uh, this is again approximation catch ch this one what we are saying the ch so here again the mouth the tongue is the same position in in contact i mean in contact with this or actually hard push here uh, in the palate position so the explosive breath ch whereas in the ch ch there is no explosive breath it's a soft uh, it's like a less breath muted less breath and catch him ch ch there is more breath there so the next one is j in the just j j here the difference is this is voiced vibration is there like g j vibration position remains same vibration and no or less breath j like just just a chalk it it is muted here okay this is vibration just and the hedgehog j same j but with the addition of more breath no explosive breath j j yeah now this somewhat might sound like zoom that z here but there is a difference here very clear difference zoom here the z is like when i say z that is more towards this ridge here and the you can experience that the zoom that is not j but in sanskritam there is there is no sound in the alphabet there is no sound this zoom z sound is not there okay. so this is completely palate the not this position not this location but this j j j is not z so this is j so this difference has to be noted when we are saying the words so <clears throat> this is the palate position and explosive breath okay. so we have palate vibration palate vibration and explosive breath here hedgehog hedgehog 
that is an approximate again but this has to be completely clear the position should be very clear there j so ch ch j j those four are there four consonants at the position of palate the last one the position is same but again uh, voiced vibration less breath but nasal for example the words enjoy enjoy that just or pinch so here the ng sound, ng sound ng, pinch where when we are saying pinch or enjoy so we are not pronouncing it like na sound we are not pronouncing na there so it's it's like a mm, mm. we are not say, we are not saying n and then joy right n joy so if we pronounce it them separately then this becomes a different sound n mm. uh, n joy n joy but when they are we pronounce it in a word like this the sound changes so the palate position the top part of the flat to the blade of the mouth is in contact with the palate enjoy but the breath the air passes through both mouth and nose nasal so pinch uh, enjoy <clears throat> so let's practice chare you want to practice mute uh, betty so means dev anybody wants to practice okay hey. tina yeah. yeah uh chalk इंग्लिश वर्ड्स बट सो दस्ट अप्रॉक्सिमेशन जस्ट गिव एन आइडिया बट नाउ कंसिडरिंग दिस इज लाइक अ palatal position just try mm. to pronounce just the individual consonants like oh, cha okay. cha 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 no oh, i i have problem with the last one um i because um i speak french i have more pressure when i um, like I, i would say enjoy mm so um it's kind of put more pressure it's more it comes more like enjoy is that okay. enjoy so mm-hmm. i need to practice on that right right so the first one say that first one again cha mm so so what i'm hearing you know that i'm hearing is the ha cha there so this should be completely cha. muted ch cha. cha yeah yes cha hmm cha cha nice nice ja ja mm. cha yes hmm and there one i have for and yeah, last one, last one yeah inya yeah inya yes inya correct inya yeah. mm. i'm being yeah. uh, i inya yeah yes yep good 
Thank you. May I try? Yes. Yes. Um. To, uh, to, no. Sorry. Uh. To, 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 uh. Just. Yeah. 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 Only thing what I'm hearing is this uh, explosives. Those are the problems, I guess, like uh, usually need more practice there. So this has to really come out very clear, more explosive, more breath. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ja, ja. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it needs still more, some more practice, uh, because I think as uh, Madhavendra was saying, this, this, this uh, explosives, they are not, those sounds are not very common, or they are more like a non-aspirates, or somewhat between aspirates and non-aspirates. But here we have to put really more breath, with no shyness there. No, we don't have to be shy. That to put more breath, shy in the sense, in terms of. Uh, putting the breath. No, we don't have to be uh, uh, any kind on that. Like So put more breath like hey, ja, ja. really push it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you. Sanjeev, yes. can, can you compare the ear in sing and the one in enjoy? Those right, two. right. Can you repeat yes. those? Yeah. Yes, yes. That would be a good comparison. Uh, see the slide. Hmm. The word here, sing. Uh, I write both the words. So here in the sing, we are the that the g, the g, the g sound. After that, this n sound, n sound. It is pronounced quickly. I mean, we are not separating sin and g there. Right? Sin, g, sin, g. So when we are pronouncing quickly there, sing. So here, so note that this g sound. What is the position for g? Position for the location in the mouth. Throat. Throat. Yeah. Throat. G. So this the preceding nasal sound. Okay, whether you write writing, maybe anything like ma or n. Here the spelling is n. Or that's fine. Mm -hmm. But this is not a n sound. Like a not. That when we say not, this n sound is different. Though the letter is same here, the sound changes here. Okay, the sound changes here because look at the following sound. Following sound is guttural, that is throat. This position is throat. So this, the preceding nasal sound, will also become guttural yeah? <coughs> because the following sound, following consonant is guttural. So this preceding one is also becomes guttural when pronounced, you know, uh, quickly there, like. So it doesn't stand out like n here. So sing. So you have the throat expands like as if it is going to pronounce g next. So it is ready for pronouncing g. So sing. So this n changes to n sound. Sing. Whereas here enjoy the the letter is same n only, but the, look at the fo uh, the following sound. Following sound is a consonant which is J, which is like a J. We saw that in this uh, next uh, set, right? Like a J, just. So the preceding nasal sound is has to be ready to pronounce that following consonant. 
So the preceding here is n nya sound. The j sound is palatal. J sound because these are all palatal and j. So in preparation for that, the preceding nasal sound will also assume that position. So here it was guttural sing n in preparation for g, whereas in preparation for j. So this will become palatal that mm. So mm, mm, mm. So you can see the difference in the position the what part of the tongue is trying to act here. Okay. That is the actuator. What part of the tongue is tongue is trying to act in terms in 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 this case sing the back of the tongue sing. Whereas here for enjoy, so in preparation for J, so it is tongue is moving already in preparation for J, J, sing enjoy, so so that this becomes palatal. Note that if you don't say J at all, so the think that the next that joy is not there, no, there is no joy, so just N. So here the if you see that the tongue position is different here, when if you just say N, it is not, it is not stopping here, the tongue. It is touching the back of your teeth there, N, right? When you say not or N, N, the, the tongue, the tip of the tongue is touching the back of the teeth. So that is a different position. But here, we are saying that this N sound in uh, conjunction, I mean, in relation with the J sound, J sound, following it. So, this is not the position for that, for J. For the J position is the labial, uh, sorry, the palatal. So, this, the preceding nasal sound will also be the same position and the, the tongue will also move there. So, it will not move towards this uh, teeth. So, for sing, so that is the throat, sing, sing, ga. So then the ga follows. There is here, eng, eng, enjoy. So that, nya, nya sound precedes the ja sound. Okay. Is that better? Veena? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, right. So that was the palatal sound. A few more minutes. So let this consonant series. The next uh, position is cerebra or the roof. These consonants are called cerebral consonants, cerebral. And the actuator, the part of the tongue which is acting here is tip. In, in guttural it was back of the tongue. In uh, palatal sounds, consonants, it was the flat or the top of the tongue. And for the cerebral sounds, it is tip of the tongue, yeah, the tip. So uh, let's start. Uh, so the first word here, can somebody pronounce it for me? Anybody who has not tried? Uh, Willem? If you want to try or Shiv? Yes. Yeah. So. Um, Hello. Ta. Ta. Da. No, no. The, uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Can I go? Take and you down, got root at here, under uh, thunder. Yeah. The, the, what, is, what is the first one? First one. Take. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Shiva, what, what, what you want to pronounce? The first one? Take. Yeah. So here, very carefully. Very carefully, 
notice where when you say take where is the tongue touching what part of the oral cavity tip of the tongue right we, we use tip of the tongue touching what part take front palate yep yeah take or do uma take Take. Yeah, take. So, what part of the tip? Uh, what part of the ting? Uh, sorry. Tip, tip of, of the, the tongue goes to the third position. Yeah. That right. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. And we know what about like in the French pronunciation? Take. Take. Hmm. Take. Yeah, uh, French would be more in the front. Take. Yes. Yeah. But uh, hmm. I know it has to be on the position three, so I'm trying. Yes. Yes. To. Exactly. So this has to be noted. So this position number three, what is shown here, probably do not exist. It does not exist in English or uh, other languages. Probably I don't know. But when we say take, take, it. the position is somewhere here okay. somewhere here yeah. not where this number 3 is shown okay. somewhere here so there is a front of the teeth here and then above that behind that so the when you say take and till or even done done so these positions are somewhat here okay. whereas <coughs> in this for the consonants in this alphabet chart so we let to we let to move that position little bit backwards yeah? not where we where the english word english sound t is sound t <coughs> so we need to move it back where there is a, you feel that ridge there that's a uh, curvy ridge in the here at that position there is one thing to remember there is one part to remember the other part is what is the actuator the, this is the position the ridge is the position okay and good and the the so the position is behind the where the english word take the take sound is pronounced t sound is pronounced is backwards okay it's back to, it's slightly back of that uh position and then the actuator what part of the tongue is used is also going to be a little bit different here so though we say tip of the tongue when we say when we sound take we use the tip of the tongue but for the sanskrit t sound t sound so i'm going to write it here write it as upper case t t so here the position is little bit back back side no, not exactly where this is take is there and the actuator that part of the tongue is still the the tip but it is curled slightly backwards like this the tip of the tongue is slightly curled curled backwards it is not like straight like this that tip of the tongue so curl very slightly okay? it's not like complete curl but slightly curl it backwards and then can try to pronounce that t sound the same word you if you practice instead of take it it will sound like take tay so without that t sound take t so that is this is again muted voiced no aspiration less breath so that is a characteristic with the position of ridge here uh 
So that is true. The position is true, and that needs to be taken care. This will need some practice, uh, really more practice, as I understand, because the position is really different here, okay? where we do not use in the Sanskritam. We don't use this in between position. Okay? So it's back. The, the that uh, curving ridge in the mouth top part and sl tip of the tongue slightly curved backwards T and then same with the more breath explosive breath we have T T and with the vibration we and the less breath we have D D same position, da. And more breath, da. Da. And again, this is a nasal counterpart of this series, of the cerebral series, nasal. Again, note that the following, following, after, the, after this na sound, after this n, what is following? Da. So, da is a cerebral in this case. So, this is da, right? Da. Da is done. That is cerebral uh, letter sound. So, in preparation for that, the preceding nasal sound will also be cerebral. Okay? So, the position is same, but the air, the nose, nasal passage is also used. Also, remember also, not only. Also used to pronounce this sound so un, under so as you notice the tongue is in this position number three only when we are trying to say this under under the touching here and un, un, and then it is pronouncing the sound under so that the preceding sound mm, mm, with the tongue touching here that is the mm sound mm, un, mm, like thunder so my pronunciation is maybe different so because i am trying to pronounce the muted d non voiced d so with at this position under Okay, anybody wants to try? Stephen? Yeah. Did you say S Stephen? Yeah, yeah, please. Oh, okay. Um, well, ta, till, till. Da, uh, da, da, um, yeah, and I'm not sure what the difference is between the last two sequences there, the Godhood and it here and the under and thunder, but, um, da, ta, ta. Okay. Yeah, start with the first one. How do you say the first? Ah. So here, try to move that. Uh, use this position, okay? Not this position. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, ta. Uh, ta, ta. Without that, at the end, that should not be that ha sound. That ha sound. Ta. Just uh, muted. Ta. ta. Like a, so, let's say tiger. So, how do you say tiger? Tiger. Yeah, that ta sound is better than this take. That ta tiger. That ta. Tiger. That ta. In that, it's muted. No, no, that no explosive breath there. And now, same thing, the same tur sound with more breath. You know, the explosive breath, literally very explosive. Ta, ta, ta. Hmm. ta. Yeah. Okay. And then next to da, this da. Yeah, that is good. Da. And here, explosive breath, 
Da. Da. No, mor, mor, da. ne. Da. Ta. Da. Ta. Yeah. And now here, this is a nasal. This sound, n, n sound. N. An. Mm. Trying to say, yeah, in this word, an. 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 Yeah. They're just a n sound. N sound. So, n sound is this, this consonant here. Yeah. Nda. Nda. Good. So, thank you. So, anybody else want to try? So, Sanjeev, yep. for for the uh, for the N sound, is it always that it has to follow what is coming after it? Yes. Okay. Can I try? Yeah. Um. Da. Sorry. Da. Ta. Da. Dha, an. Yes, much better. And. Yeah, yeah. So this, when you ask, when you said, always it has to follow what is, it has to. No, uh, of the nature of what follows, what consonant follows. Yes, yes. And, but also, it can be pronounced at the end of some, uh, independently at the end of some word also. Uh, for example. Uh, so in this example, it is between the word, like under. Okay? Yeah. Under. So, but in Sanskritam, mm -hmm. it can be at the end of some word also. Like, uh, let's say this, this, oh, keep writing this. Let's say we can write like this. So, this is uh, transliteration. The uppercase N is for this N, n sound, the cerebral mm -hmm. N sound. Lowercase N is a different one. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. in this case, when we want to pronounce, we can just say un, un, mm -hmm. not an, un is different, un. Mm -hmm. Un. Yes. Right. Thank you. All right. So, we'll, we'll stop here today. So, we looked at this first three rows in the consonant series. The with the position guttural, uh, gutter, palate, and cerebrum. So guttural sounds, consonants are k, k, g, g, n. So when we are pronouncing them on their own, you can try to expand that throat area inside, okay? not the not towards the lip, but inside the throat. You can expand it and try to say. K, K, G, G, N, and palatal ones are uh, the next position palate and the tongue, the top or the flat portion of the tongue touching the palate. Ch, Ch, Ch is explosive. Ch, J, J, Y, Y, and cerebral sounds are T. Ta, da, da, na, 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 the end, na. Oh, um, may I try those, the whole grouping? Yeah. yeah. Um, ka, ka, ga, ga, nya, uh, ch, 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 Ja ja, nya, ta ta, da da, na. Yeah. Is that right? Almost. So what I hear uh, is that this and this there are not much difference, and this and this. So here we need uh, muted, yeah? muted and no breath like. So here, more explosive. There should be very clear difference, more difference. K, 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 K. And here, T, T. So put, we need a lot of energy here in, in, this, in this column. 
and in this column also because they are aspirated more energy this is very less energy ka ka so uh, what i heard here is they are here also there was more uh, more energy and here more energy than required here it was less energy than required almost sounding similar but here oh. they have to be sounding completely different very less energy try to do that ka and here there is ka 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 yeah ka 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 oh ka yeah. ka yes yes ka ka yep yeah टंग टूअर्ड्स Yes. No. Great. 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 Good. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Thanks everyone. We'll stop here and we'll meet next week. Have a great week. Thank, week. You. thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. 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 Thank